good, everybody? It's your man, Legacy the Prince. I am CEO Aaliyah. DJ B4EY had to step out real quick on a little emergency, but we are back in the building, man. Super excited, yo. Hi, Aaliyah, you straight? You straight? You straight? You straight? Listen, I feel like a parent this week. Why I say that? So I had to take my little sister to open house. She's okay. 15. Okay. But all the teachers thought I was the student. I mean, you... you. No, 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 no. <laughs> let's, let's not join. You let's are not, student but height. I look grown. I look grown. Because but, of the lashes. But if you take the lashes off, you are... No, but I, I, wore, a, I wore a little cute outfit, too, so they should have knew that I, was, that I was grown, too. You know what I'm saying? Okay, 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 okay. Because right, what? No, I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> we about to take this far left, okay? <laughs> no, I definitely, I definitely felt some type of way because they kept thinking that I was a student. Every time I came in, they was like, hi, my name's... I'm like, I'm a parent, okay? They gave you little lollipops and stuff? No, for real, they kept... <laughs> They kept doing that every time I came in, and I also babysitting my niece this weekend too, and she's five. So I feel like a real mom. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's Nothing what's like up. Nothing like you though, because you got real parent responsibility. Yeah, we do. You know what I'm saying? But yo, listen, um, I'm super excited because we got actually we actually got a really really dope guest in the building with us hey. right now, man. Big shout out to our special guest, Reconcile. What's popping, brother? What's up with it? Yo, we doing good, man. Yo, doing good, good. Awesome. doing good, doing good. How are you, man? How you doing? I'm good, bro. I can't complain. You know what I'm saying? I hear you know. I feel you, you know, man. I feel you, yo. On the, the trenches vibe. You feel me? I feel Trying you. To change, I was actually my feel. You feel me? I feel you, man. I was actually excited about this interview, man. I was like, yo, let me tap in and see what the homies all about, man. I'm actually sad because 2020 got canceled. Man, I'm so sad. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that. It looked like 2021 about to get canceled too. Well, 2020, 2021 is canceled. 2020 was canceled as well. <laughs> This COVID, man, it's been crazy, yo. It's wild, bro. Man, how has it's COVID how has COVID affected you on your end, man? Uh, you know, like, so one, you know, we do a lot of stuff to try to impact and help people. Yeah. And, you know, whether it's, you know, inside a, a jail facility, uh-huh. whether it's inside a juvenile facility, whether it's at a school or whatever. So many things shut down, and it, it actually actually impeded us from even doing things that we normally do for people mm-hmm. in a traditional way. So even helping people, and 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 doing ministry with people, or even trying to um, you know, offer service to people that we do in the community like we regularly do, we had to find new creative ways to do it. Um, you know, with the school down, with the school board shutting things down, with the Department of Juvenile Justice shutting down. Yeah, you know, so you know, uh. And then, you know, as an artist, you know, uh, you start getting all these calls from all these promoters and these people that book, you know, all these different events and everything you got set up in these different cities and them things being shut down too. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I, it was some promoters holding on to the end. They're like, they ain't really going to shut it down. I was like, bro, I think it's, it's, done. <laughs> it's done, bro. They're like, nah, nah, we just going to wait. I'm like, y'all boys, it's like, I look. And so it was a crazy year, you know. And then on top of that, you had everybody still still going through life. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was going through a lot of life. My team was going through a lot of life. People finances all jacked up. You know what I'm saying? When you when you take out, you know, for artists, you know what I'm saying? You make money definitely on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, doing shows and different stuff. So you just you just minus that from the whole equation, and dudes got to figure different stuff out. You know what I'm saying? So. Facts, facts, yeah. facts, man. I know you're probably not new to the GH3 audience. Shout out to God's House of Hip Hop, but you are a, yeah, a, new, a new face to the Fresh Leftovers audience. Um, tell, tell our people, our family, man, a little bit about you, man. Where you from and all that good stuff, man. Yeah, man. Um, I'm straight out of South Florida, born and raised. I ended up, um, you know, I was a kid that grew up in the trailer parks. My mom, I got a, I got a unique situation. Talk to us. When a lot of people look at me. Uh, you know, they might think I'm Dominican or something. So I'm, actually, <laughs> I'm actually mixed. I'm black and white. And, you know, that's part of my story. My mom, uh, she was a little black girl that stayed behind the projects. And my dad was uh, came from a real poor white family that lived across uh, town in the, in, a, in the trailer park. Okay. And mom had me when I was, when she was 16. And, um, you know, grew up in poverty, grew up in, um, you know, not having stuff, grew up in the trailer park. Uh, you know, family, you had a lot of tension, you know, nobody, you know, had graduated, people didn't have resources, you know what I'm saying, even or even just tangible ways to work through their trauma, you know what I'm saying, a lot of trauma, a lot of recycled trauma, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, um, by the time I was going into middle school, you know, I was living in a single parent home with my father, my father was a broken man, 
he was broke literally broken broken his spirit broken his pockets and um you know we had a lot of bump we bumped our heads a lot of times you know um me and my dad used to uh we used to we used to fist fight and um by the time i started getting to high school um my dad had uh me and him was just so toxic that i ended up getting kicked out of the house and started living with my grandma my dad was my dad was really he was really trying you know y'all y'all know he was really trying to ho- keep me from things that he had seen every every other man in my family do negative you know every other man in my family is incarcerated you know even the young ones even the youngest ones the 17 16 year olds were incarcerated oh wow you know like i'm watching you do the same stuff everybody else is doing and you're going down the same road my father uh his one of his uh, main occupations was he worked as a correctional officer inside the inside the jail Mm. so he's like i'm watching you do everything that everybody does to get themselves incarcerated and i'm trying to prevent you from going that way and i will fight you before i let you go that way right you know what i'm saying but at and the so same we, time it was pushing you away though yeah at the same yeah at the same time you know that type of love you know what i'm saying was you know maybe you know feel like i you know maybe really make me feel like at, at that point you know my mom was out of my life i didn't know where she was at me and him were fist fighting i started living with my grandparents my grandfather passed away and then I, I looked up, you know what I'm saying? I'm sleeping in a in a trap house with a with a girl, with a girlfriend, you know what I'm oh, saying? Wow. And um it was in that process of all of this that I was going through, um, that God really, you know, started utilizing and using some of my my pain and even the mistakes I made to pull me closer to him, which is just a beautiful thing in general, like how God could use your mistakes and your pain to actually save you. Um you know, saying he pulled me up out of, you know, I was staying in the projects. He pulled me up out of that. You know, I, I, I should. It was a, it was moments I should have got shot. You know, what I'm saying gun to my chest over stupid beef. You know, what I'm saying it was streets that I felt like at nighttime, like I can't go down this street. You know, I gotta go a whole different way. Yeah. You know, work by like I'm walking down somewhere at the wrong time. You know, because somebody that I just fought, you know, what I'm saying, pulled back up on me. You know, what I'm saying. Yeah. And. Um, my grandfather, he was really, he was like, look, my grandfather lived his whole life in the trailer park. He was like, Ronnie, you know what I'm saying? You're too talented to to be out here just wildly. True. You know what I'm saying? Not acting like people don't care about you. And I would get to, I got to a point, he would call and my grandma would call and I would ignore their calls, man. I was working at Popeye's. I had me a little uh, uh, Metro PCS phone I had bought while I was working at Popeye's. They used to be blowing up my little Nokia phone that got a little snake on it. Um, <laughs> I remember those days. And, and I used to just ignore the call because I'm like, man, I don't want to be preached to. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like, you know, I know what I'm doing. And, you know, when you come from such a small mindset, small environment, you really think that all life really is, is, you know, I'm going to get old enough just to get out y'all, out y'all space. Right. I'm going to have my own things and I'm going to live my life my own way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, in the midst of all of that, one, my grandfather, he was really sick. I used to take care of him when I was a kid. I used to, I, you know, I was the type of, uh, you know, my grandfather was super sick. He took a pill just to, he took a pill almost for every, uh, he take one pill, then he got to take a pill because he took that pill. He take another pill because he took that pill. He had heart issues. He had diabetes, all this different stuff. And I used to like, you know, help him use the restroom, help him get up in the morning. And so one day uh, he had a heart attack while I'm just ignoring my phone because I don't want to be preached to. I don't want nobody to say nothing to me. And we ain't, it, I ain't really come from no churchy family. You know, It might go to church on Easter. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like everybody. <laughs> but, yeah, like everybody, you know what I'm saying? But he paid, one day, you know, the, um, the ambulance came for him and he had a heart attack. And while I'm sitting there ignoring the phone call, he was dying. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, I finally, you know, everybody started calling my phone one day. And I just was like, y'all are tripping. And then the, the news got to me that they were calling my phone because my grandfather passed away and everybody knew kind of what, what he had meant to me. And so, uh, you know, I had never stepped into a church like that on a serious level, you know what I'm saying? Other than just like, like I said, some day was going to church on Easter. But um, I was on, I was, I still kept getting in trouble, ended up being on probation. You know, um, as a teenager, you know, going into court with just my grandma, all my little homies that I was doing my little thing with, <laughs> it's just me and my grandma, the lady that I disrespect. Wow. Talked to her crazy. She's the one sitting with me in court. 
and I started doing a community service and it was actually a uh, so I'm from a place called Fort Myers, Florida. And in Fort Myers, Florida, you see a lot of, it's, it's weird. You see poor white people, poor black people, poor Hispanic people, poor Haitian people, poor Mexicans. It's like just a mix of poor people. So you know what I'm saying? It's probably it, the most it, affordable place that you can live in Florida. Why is it called Little Pakistan? And why they call it Little Pakistan? Yeah, yeah. Man, they, they, uh, <laughs> around the time plot started taking off, it was just like a heavy street culture, you know what I'm saying? So you had like, you know, Teenagers having big, you know, they don't know where they was getting these guns from. Big guns, banana clips, extensions, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, the, the violence level and then just the fact it's a it's a whole like when you come to South Florida, like some of y'all watch like Lil Kodak, and they say, Man, Kodak, how he talking all that, like, like who talk like that? He really get all his lingo from Fort Myers. Four miles is like a, like going to a whole different place. It's so country, but it's so like south, and it's got all this mix of Jamaican, Haitian, and and Southern black people. It's a it's a real really weird uh, eclectic place. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, long story short, like Pakistan, there was just there's just this, this mentality that started rising up that like you know. You know, one thing you say if you're from four miles, you you t- you hard, you tough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like for whatever reason, they would. That was like we ain't have nothing. We ain't no big city, but we will be the most gangster city, <laughs> gangster little poppin'. city you ever tried. To. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna let y'all know what's popping. We're gonna let you know what's popping, man. That's crazy. So, did you did you um did you ever actually like pursue any type of like therapy for like um you know the situation man, growing up with pops? Football. Football, okay. Not run, throwing my head into somebody on the football field. Nah, I, I didn't really even understand the concept of, of any of that kind of stuff, you know. Um, you just talk to be tough and, and get through stuff and figure it out. And, you know, to be honest, like, that's one of the things. Even later in my life, when I started really taking things like that serious, like therapy or just, you know, just having more candid conversations about my past. Me and my sister talk about that a lot. Yeah. You know, talk about, like, man, how we came up was really kind of crazy. You know, like, it's, it's crazy that, you know, we didn't go all these different routes that, you know, because I, when I go home, it's like a ghost town. Everybody locked up. Everybody in jail. Everybody did. You know, I remember I was sitting at the red light, sitting at the red light in the car with my daughter, and I look over, and it's one of my homies from high school, and he's begging for money. Oh, wow. It's just like, wow. It's like, man, God, man, look at all the beautiful things you've done with my life. I had an opportunity. Like, when I gave my life to God around that time, it was a Hispanic pastor from, from, uh, from the Immokalee area of Fort Myers. You know, he walked me through Christ and then he took the time to really invest in me and he started pulling up on me. And, you know, he really um, invested a lot in me to actually start seeing my life differently and seeing what my purpose on this planet was differently, you know? Mm-hmm. He's like, you didn't come through all that pain, he giving it. You know, you gave all, you came through all that pain so you can help people get out of it. Yeah. And um, so I had the opportunity to, I was good at football. I had the opportunity to go leave, play Division One college football. Where you play that? You said what? I said where? where? Oh yeah, I played at uh, Rice University in Conference USA. Okay, okay. And yeah, I had the opportunity to play some a bunch of games on TV and just you know really you know fly all these different places and have all these different experiences. But God always reminded me like I didn't pull you out of all of this just for you to just. You know, I, so it's like I had a mission. It was in the mission. Somehow, sometimes I feel like the mission was to go back to the places I was from and be the difference that I wanted to see. Mm. Go back and be the change. Be the person who was, you know, the bridge from somebody from death to life. The bridge for somebody to get a resource or, or, or have a, a relationship that otherwise, if they didn't have it, they would they would drown. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I, I started feeling a calling on my life. And that's really when I started picking up the microphone and saying, okay, I grew up on, like, I remember hearing some Lecrae them. And I was like, yeah, I mess with Lecrae, but like, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> yeah. we come from a whole nother like, yeah, whole murder rap. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, how can I communicate this message of the gospel that's changed my life in a way that people from where I'm from, my context, and, and you know what we what we listen to, our culture can appreciate, understand, and, and capture the message 
You know what I'm saying? That's facts. Lecrae, yeah. like, Lecrae is like the Harvard. <laughs> the, the Harvard of uh <laughs> he's from the Harvard side, you know what I'm saying? We need some of that real stuff, Lecrae. What's up? You know? <laughs> but, but honestly, man, I get it. Make that too. He make he makes some of that. Yeah, I know. We I'm, might I'm have just pulling this coming up. Man. I don't know. We're gonna see if they use it. Yeah. I I I have actually had have had the chance to listen to your music and and I mean sometimes I just sit back and just 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 listen to where you're coming from and like you said once you, you should really speak to the streets where you're coming from giving a good message and I'm glad to see that at the same time like behind the scenes you can leave, live that same like the life that God has actually wanted you to live to be a light to the others that see you you came from here but look where I, look look where God brought me, and it's it's a it's a powerful testimony, man. I've I've seen you perform on stage, and I was like, man, this dude is the truth, like he the truth. So so was there like a specific turning point that that brought you from you know going down this whirlwind of just you know bad decisions and you know violence and was there a, like a a, a a turning point? Like what was the turning point? I should ask. Yeah, that a couple turning points. Like- okay. The, I think first off, like when I was in high school, you know, you know, I was living in the projects and when I was, you know, fist fighting my dad and living, you know, jumping out my grandma's window, hey. I think the first thing was just like, man, I'm lost. Mm. I like, I, I could identify, I, I knew, I'm like, bro, I'm lost, bro. Like, I don't know what to do. I remember one time, like, granddad had died, I went to pray. I started praying to my granddaddy because I had never prayed before. Uh, I didn't know yeah. who to, like, how to pray. I just, I just feel like, okay, my granddaddy died. He probably can see where I'm at. <laughs> like, he, he looking at he around here somewhere. This, this is where I be at. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I just felt like just a lot of guilt and shame. And then, you know, like I said, the, the Hispanic guy from from Amakali, which Amakali is man, it's like two red lights, number uh, poor Haitians and, and poor Mexican working in uh, sugar cane fields and watermelon fields. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So he, you know, he was, te- he led me to, he, he shared the gospel and led me to Christ. He's like, look, man, Jesus died for you, bro. And he wants to have a relationship with you. And he is the only thing that can change your life. I said, man, I just want to get close as I can to that every day. So it was just really just at that point, it was like, man, I know the route that I'm going on. If I keep going this way, I'm going to be like my brother. I'm going to be like my cousin. I'm going to be like everybody out here that is destroying themselves. And I said, I just don't want to destroy myself. True. But I ain't know what it meant to live for Christ. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, like, it was like, okay, you know, so, okay, I, well, I can't beat people up no more. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it feel me like, I, you know, I, I still had, I was a huge learning curve for me to, to really understand and, and, you know, identify like, you know, what are the things that, you know, how are the ways that I honor God and live for him and, and what are the things that I can do that actually, you know, create a better life for myself when it comes to, you know, having, you know, being a person that walks and looks like Christ and that protecting my life. And so I think when I got to college, man, I was, true story, I was playing ball and um, we were playing Oklahoma State. Okay. Uh, y'all familiar with Des Bryant, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. We're playing Oklahoma State, they got Des Bryant on their team or whatever. He's like, he, Des Bryant was a senior, I was like a, a freshman. So we coming down the tunnel, Oklahoma State, I might be like, it might have been 60, 70,000, 70,000 in the stadium that day. Ooh, we at the end of the tunnel, and I'm like, all right, y'all, I got the prayer. Our Father, which out of him, hallowed be thy name. Uh-huh. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Oh, no. Get everybody hype. You know, <laughs> hey, they were like, hey, man, now let's go whoop these motherfuckers. <laughs> 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 but that's real though. That's yeah, real. Like, yeah. Like, we gonna whoop the head. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know they hey. turn their heads looking crazy. Like, hold on, he did. You know what I'm saying? We some head busters. Yeah, we some head busters. We gonna knock you out, play <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And uh, my, pull out my a partner. tambourine from it. <laughs> Boy, yeah. My partner hey, came with Cheddar. He, a, he actually played. He played a couple of years in the league. He played for the um, Texans and he played for the Saints and the Bears. Uh, right behind Julius Peppers. So he pulled me aside. He was like, "Running, man. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love you. You know, I know you really. I know you rock with God. You know what I'm saying? But he's like, man. Sometimes I, I can't lie to you. When we in the locker room, I can't tell the difference between you 
and the rest of the team. Oh, and, wow. wow. And I was like, oh, wow. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> but when I left, I talked to my little grand marquee. Yeah. I thought about them a long. I was like, wow. well, I bet it was. That was that's a that's ish. a gut punch, man. Yeah, I'm that's like, the bro, wait, on Madden, the man. <laughs> <laughs> he said he can't see the Christ in me. Wow. Ooh. You know, you and um, yeah, we were me and him. We spent that whole summer like coaching youth basketball in Third War Houston, and I started living in Third War Houston, and um. Then I, I started attending in this church in Third World Houston called uh, uh, Miss, um, Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church with Pastor D.C. Cofield and my, my mentor to this day, uh, Pastor P.T. Nguolo. And my dude P.T. Nguolo, he put the effort out to disciple me. And I, that's when I started getting this like, disciple. Mm. And from there, man, just so many beautiful things just start happening in and through my life. And I uh, started become, really becoming... Uh, uh, like a young little leader, you know, running through the third ward and trying to help people change people's, you know, we we lost the church in the, in the housing projects. We, I mean, I can't tell you how many kids I mentored over that time. I had I had kids living with me that was from third ward, hmm. you know. What I'm saying, um, you know, it was just a lot of stuff we were doing. We started a we started a nonprofit, you know, uh, servicing kids and gangs, you know, just sharing the gospel. Then we started. You know, we started this this group called Frontline with me and my dog Corey Paul. And next thing you know, like the, the you know this little hood music that we was doing, rep, you know, repping God out of Third War, like people yeah. was listening to it from everywhere, from New York to Los Angeles to Atlanta. Damn. And it's just like it just happened overnight. You know what I'm saying? So, so <laughs> and it's been a, it's been a crazy journey. So, can you walk me through? Um, I see it, it says that you have a bachelor's in. You know religious studies and philosophy yeah. and also i want to ask the question um so i want you to like what made you choose that you know switch i don't know if you switch switch majors or not but what made you go down that route and then for those those kids that you were actually helping are you still in contact with any of them today and how are they doing like how is that you know how is that important to actually stay in contact and you know keep it up and make sure checking in kind of basically becoming a mentor to them yeah, yeah. So, um, when I was in, when I first went out to college, like the goal was like, all right, man, like, <laughs> you know, like you you always say like I'm gonna be something that you saw like was bad, so you want to fix it. So my grandfather died of heart, he had heart failure. Yeah. So I was, you know, I want to be a cardiologist. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. I thought you was gonna say vegan or something. Like I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat right. I'm gonna make sure I eat right. <laughs> that, that's what I want to do now. I just want to eat better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, I was like, yeah, I'm be a cardiologist. And then I started, uh, I got to college and I was like, bro, I don't want to be no cardiologist. When that book, he was like, what? <laughs> yeah. well, he, he saw all the thing. courses. That's what happened. He was like, I so when you take play what? college football, <laughs> when you play college football and you're winning, you get, the, you get special perks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I played football at Rice University, which is in downtown Houston, Texas, like right off the medical center. And uh, it's it's a, like it's like three miles away from Third Ward, three miles away from University of Houston, three miles away from Texas Southern University. Wow. So a lot, you know, we always like was at TSU, we was always at University of Houston. I spent probably more time over there than I did at Rice. <laughs> um, but I, I remember, like, you know, when you when you're playing and you're winning, you get special perks. Like we would fly private all the time. You know, what I'm saying we roll up to the airport. The, you know the, the the plane sitting on on the on the clear port. You know you walk yeah. up to the plane, you go in there. Everybody got their own TV. You don't got to pick up it's his bag. Real, it's real gotta do nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's real fly. The whole plane is ours. It ain't number football players on the plane. You fly. You you take off at crazy times of the day. You, like we'll get on the plane like at like say we had a night ESPN game. We might get back on the plane like at two a.m. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just. You know, you you stay. You know, every time you go to the game, they got a police escort. You know, motorcades taking you to the stadium. When you get there, it's thousands of people, people screaming your name. You know, and um, you know, and it's you know, it's, it's college football. I would have had a big head for sure. I remember. <laughs> you said what? I said I would have had a big head for sure. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, big head. So oh, yeah. I remember I started living off campus because, you know. When I was when I was in college, uh, they had there was an issue 
it's multiple issues. They they just kept trying to arrest all the black guys on campus. They didn't think we went to. They didn't think it we still went to is. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it still is. So I, nothing I felt mad, uncomfortable living on campus. Like, I'm gonna mess around, and get shot by one of these these exactly. these, these um old officers. <laughs> so I'm a just good way to put it. Um, <laughs> so, and so I started living in Third War one because I could afford it. Yeah. And then two, because it felt it, it was the closest thing that felt at home. So I remember one night we get off the private plane. I think we, we were playing Tulane in, in the in the uh, in uh, the Superdome in New Orleans. Mm. We we fly in late, like two o'clock in the morning. I, I get in my car to drive back to Third Ward where my apartment is, and uh, I'm driving through the rich neighborhood. You cut across 288, and then you start getting into Third Ward. Uh -huh. And, you know, kids still outside on the street, 2, 3 in the morning. Hey. You know, 14-year-olds selling drugs, yeah. okay. oh, prostitution, wow. being still at the light. Um, you know, police sirens. And it just, it just hit me again, like, the idea was like, Ronnie, I did not bring you over here for you. Mm. you are out here to help these people and to help people where you come from. And so I started thinking about, okay, so what do I really want to go to school for? Mm. And uh, that's when I started saying like, then it was like all these different things important to me, right? So like my coach all the time, you're like, Ryan, man, why? You don't need a triple major. He was like, just pick like basket weaving and be done with it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's like, do something like history. And um, I was like, nah, man, I care about philosophy, how people think. I care about sociology, the, you know, um, you know how people move and operate and the, and the reason why they do what they do. And I said, and I care about religious studies because I really want to know, you know, um, the different aspects of, you know, being studied in religion. Yeah. And uh, those were the things that were important to me at the time. And so those are the things that I pursued. And then um, so when I got out well, I had the opportunity to go straight into like a seminary, um, but I decided I just wanted to get into work, and I started, you know, building programs in the communities. I started working with the judges, I started working with the DAs. I started really getting entrenched. I started even working with uh, child protective services. Oh, um, wow, and I took a job in Miami, which was, you know, back in my neck of the woods where I grew up, and uh, just had the opportunity to really expand some of the programs and the ideas that I thought could change communities. And, uh, man, I've just been blessed to do that kind of work um, outside of music. So every day I get up, it just feels like, you know, you mentioned, you know, what, where are these kids? Man, I must have talked. I must have worked with maybe 10,000 kids. Wow. It's not a place I can't go that people don't stop me, like whether in Houston or Miami or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, bro, I go into the restaurant, sit down, the bus boy will come over. Hey, man, you remember me? I was like, nah, nah, man, you was in, you that preacher man, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what you said, man, changed my life. Just anywhere I stop at the gas station. There's no way I can, there's no hood I can't go through that somebody's not going to come up and say thank you because I actually was investing my time in probably the most hurt young men and young women. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's just... It's just beautiful, you know. You you see people's lives change. You see what they turn into. It's, it's of course, it's a lot of sad stories too. Yeah, you know. And I wrote records about that, um, but it's a lot of beautiful things as well. And and the, the thing that I'm realizing that's really dope is that you really actually like get out and touch the people. Like a lot of times oh. we expect, like a lot of times we run into artists that's like. You know, some artists be having that mentality where they it's just, just talk. Good to say. Yeah, and then it's like you really just, not going out here and, 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 and rubbing shoulders with the people, but like, bro, you really out here. Like, hey, if I could talk about the, the Christian hip hop for a second, like that that was like the blueprint that was gave to me. Like when I got to Houston, there was a dude named Trey Nine. Trey Nine ran this thing in Fifth Ward, which they called Bloody Nickel. And Trey Nine, he was he had this thing called Hip Hop Hope. He'd be in the middle of the trenches in Fifth Ward. Uh, he he had worked with Jay Prince. Uh, you know, y'all know Jay Prince. Yeah, Jay he worked Prince. with Jay Prince to to secure Jay Prince's facility to actually help kids in that neighborhood. And and one of the things he told me is like, before you pick up a mic, man, you need to pick up a broom. True. Before yeah. you want to jump on the stage, man, you need to jump out here and serve people. And he's like, it's not about a microphone on the stage. That's just a tool. It's just a tool to share the gospel. 
right? Don't ever get caught up in that. Do the work because, and then, then you know, at, at, at the time, you know, I think Lecrae had this thing too that was like, after the music stops, then what? True. The cycle. Curriculums, helping people, getting involved in people's life, doing the dirty stuff, rolling up your sleeves and actually helping, you know, being the being the hands and feet. And so that's just the game that I got. Like my brain just was wired that way. Like you got to get out here and put the work in because that's what makes a difference in somebody's life. Like the time, the effort, the investment, the commitment of you. This song, not this, you. You know what I'm saying? I feel you. Um, and so that's yeah that's just that's kind of just been my mindset the whole the whole time i think that the whole rap thing gifted boys really just want to rap you know but yeah i feel that i feel that i feel that man i feel that i feel that sis what you got for us so i want to ask you a question but i got a different question first because this is this is important to me did you ever reconnect with your mom yeah i did actually um when i graduated from college Oh, you Ashley, from her? Uh, so you graduated from uh, college? Yeah, it was a long, Sheesh. long. Oh my god! Long time, and then we still had some bumps from then. We're still working on our relationship, but I, you know, I had realized I had a lot of unforgiveness, right? Um, that I just had to deal with. I, I thought I had forgave, but I had not. And um, it's still, it's still, uh, it's still tender for me. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie. Um, but you know, guys, definitely, you know did a lot with the relationship it's not what it used to be it's not non-existent so what was your it's main real- what was your main question for her when she came back around you know what so one, I, I just i remember one time i said like i was like well, we just gotta jump on the phone i was like years just be going by and we missing each other mm-hmm. and we ain't be speaking i mean we won't be speaking so i said like let's just talk and i just want to share what i what i gotta say and then i want i want you to listen and then i want to listen to you mm-hmm. and what she communicated was just that she just made a she made she made a mistake, and she could and she, and she felt like and then once it was done she could never get it back. Mm. And instead of me just judging her having all this anger towards her, I just I really just saw the person yeah. who need who needed grace. Right. And and the the word says God's goodness leads us to repentance, not Him showing us all the ways that we were wrong, mm-hmm. because His grace leads us to repentance. You know what I'm saying? And so, and I saw her as a human being, you know, who just, I was like, man, my mama, she was young. She had all this crazy stuff going on in her life. She didn't know her father. You know, then she got pregnant. Like I was her second child. She had two kids at 16. Oh, I was wow. like, where was the, where was the Hispanic dude from Immokalee for her? Yeah. Wow. Cause if I hadn't had that dude, where would I be? You know what I'm saying? If I hadn't had people and I, I looked back at her life and it's like, she never had nobody. And, Never had. And and one thing that I learned like now, because you know, having a daughter now, it changed like a lot of things for me, man. And uh, what I realized is that um our parents, like we judge them through the lens, through a certain type of lens. And so it's they, like yeah. they did the best did that, the they best they that they could yeah. for with what they had. From what they had, they did the best that they could. And it was just like even me, like my relationship with my pops was kind of weird. Um, and it wasn't until probably about, I want to say like two months ago, like we really had like a serious conversation and I'm 28 and we had that conversation and it was, it wasn't until that moment where it was just like, all right, you get <laughs> like, you get it. I was like, I get it now. Yeah. It was just like, you know, and you know, he did the best, you know. They did. They did the best that they could with what they I feel, had. I feel like once you get that understanding, once you get that understanding of your parents, then it will help you become a better parent. So, um, break it out with your dad being tough on you. Say he showed you a lot of tough love, and then with your mom leaving you for that period of time that she did. What did that teach you when it comes to you parenting your children? I think one of the first things I, I always told myself was like, I ain't gonna be like y'all. Facts. <laughs> facts. Big facts. Automatic. <laughs> But, you know, it was crazy. That's how, like, the, the generational curse is kind of... The generational curse is kind of set up in a way that we don't really fully understand. Mm. Oh, we man. say we don't want to be like that person, but all we ever experience is what is that. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We don't have the tools or we have we don't have the... Um, you know, I started realizing, I was like, I don't have enough of the, of the other positive experiences to glean on in these moments. So what happens is you start reliving and redoing things that you said you would never want to do or do when you when you get back against the wall because like you said 
your parents were really just doing the best that they could Facts. with limited resources and limited understanding and limited experience yeah you know what I'm saying? so you know you just, it just it takes a moment to, to pause and reflect okay god i want to go a different route and i even wrote a song about it it's called hella hella drunk uh, hella fights at the crib where well, i said you know god all right the difference in my life between me and my parents is that is you mm, yeah. yeah so continue yeah. to be the difference mm -hmm. in my life so my kids can experience something different mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying That's good. um that just trying good. to be to the holy spirit you know anything that he says and trying to slow down you know, my kids drive me up the wall, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to pull that belt out, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, what? my dad didn't get nothing accomplished yep. by that, you know what I'm saying? Yep, but exactly. but drive this kid away from him, you know what I'm saying? Right, so how hard has it been to unlearn those parenting skills that you got from your parents? Uh, you know, I, it, it's it, as, as hard as it is, sometimes it's just as easy as just, just pausing for a second. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's facts. Yeah. Of pulling that belt out like yeah cause I used did. to get whoop, whoop, oh, yeah. out the frame <laughs> 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 we, had a, we had a belt that the whole neighborhood knew the name to <laughs> oh, no, my grandma used to make us no, go get, go well, get you know our you own got switch that, you had had a lot. we had to go get our own yes. switch like, uh, yeah. I used to try to pick the that's, I used to try to that's, that's light <laughs> okay that is are you talking about picking the switch? Yes, yeah. your own switch. switch. The switch that you gonna you you gonna get beat with. You, you gotta go get up. the switch that you gonna get beat with. I'm gonna pick up a See, tree, what you got? A whole the, tree. the big long switch is the one that don't hurt. It, it hit yeah. like one like. It do, boom. If yeah. you try to get them thin ones, switch. oh that junk. Yeah, the little thin one. Yeah, I had switches. Yeah. You ever got a whoop with an extension bro, cord? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I did. Okay, I don't want to hear nothing about no exactly. switch. Them that extension, extension cords, they, no that joint <laughs> soaked down to your soul. <laughs> <laughs> okay? You yeah. ever got a whoop with a plastic bag? <laughs> that's it? With the, with the, the big one. Bro, that joint hurts. Joint. That's it? The belt buckle. Oh, you ever got woo. hit with a buckle? Oh, don't try to grab that belt yo, either. Son, don't grab I that belt. Go. I got <laughs> yo, on play. I remember one time I got I got a whooping out the shower, boy. The, the, oh, the oh tip yeah, of the, I know that. Yo, yo, the tip of the belt like hit my tip, right? Oh, bro, I, I saw I, Jesus, I did it, bro. I said, "Mama, you hit my nigga." Yo. <laughs> Bro, I saw hey. Jesus, man. I oh, promise you. Bro, I'm like, oh, shoot. I ain't gonna lie. One time I had I had like whelps all on my back. I had got I had got it. Um, or like the worst whooping. I had got a Kunta Kinte whooping. Kunta oh whelps God. on my back. I, I took my shirt off and I was standing in the mirror just waiting for like them to kind of walk past the bathroom. So they so can, can make it feel bad. bad. <laughs> you had to wear like, you had to wear the I had the one oh, whip, coming so up. Had. I used to try to save my whip so I can show my teacher at school so oh, I don't wow. get in trouble. You ever got a whooper so bad you had to stand <laughs> up bad. the next day at school? Oh, uh-uh. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> sit down. Why you can't sit down? And it used to be gone in the morning. I used to be mad. Like, why you leave? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> she want to tell on it. Yeah. Oh, you get yeah, whooped so bad in the morning. They like, all right, you going to stay home today. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, yeah. Y'all's bad. <laughs> nah, my, nah, man. It was it was wild. Since we go to school one, next oh, week. Yeah. Oh, dang. <laughs> Take the weekend off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hearing your testimony and everything that you've been saying about how you came to Jesus and all this stuff like that, I haven't really heard anything about the music for real. So how did you get into CHH? Mm. Man, uh, I started out just DJing uh, college parties. I was DJing at okay. University of Houston. Okay. Yeah, I was DJing. <laughs> And I started, started DJing. I mean, Texas Southern University, the uh, the historical black college in Third Ward, they used to book me all the time. They was like, you want to do next week? You want to do next week? I was like, yeah. I didn't even have no DJ equipment. All I had was some speakers, and I had a virtual DJ on my laptop. Hey. Yeah, and that was, I was DJing all the parties. And then my dog came to one party one time. He was like, yeah, man, you be talking all that stuff about Jesus, but you playing all this ratchet music. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! It's like, man, I can't win, man. It, was it the same guy? Was it the same guy? The <laughs> same dude. Oh, wow. Dang, uh, he keep no, trying to come back to you. Did, you. He needed Jesus did, more than you did at here. the top. Right? <laughs> you in the same club I'm in? What you talking about? <laughs> but, that's the crazy part because it's always when when they know that you profess it or like walk it, yeah. they, like they gonna be they, they gonna, judge you bro, more. They, they waiting for me to cuss at work. Look at y'all. Look at been there, like that. <laughs> we got out. Well, they wait. They've been waiting on me to slip up for ten years now. I said, man, 
I, said, I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes I'll be thinking it, boy, but I can't let it go. Yeah, uh, so I used we used to free. So then they start asking me the people, the, the cast from college. They was all going to this church, and they was like, "Well, he could DJ the stuff at the church too." They had like a reception or some. Start DJing at the church. I was just DJing everywhere. I said, "What was you and playing at the church?" I start, we start rapping. I was just like cussing beats on, like some Houston beats. And we start rapping. And they was like, "Man, you should rap." Then one day out. I bought my homie on my football team. I went to his dorm. He had the whole little closet set up with the little milk, uh, the little crates from McDonald's. Yeah, you oh, know, yeah. the egg crates. Yeah, Mike and uh, and we went off like we went for a week straight, like recording in his room. Then I was like, man, let me go to McDonald's and get me some of them little. Uh, <laughs> Right, so I went back to my apartment. I did a whole closet full of cup holders. I bought this little cheap, little hundred fifty dollar mic with my Pell Grant money. Uh-oh. And I remember uh, those days. Yeah, I remember that. Then I started rapping in the closet, and then I, I had put this little song out. He was like, "Yo, that's good, man. You should keep rapping." Then they invited me to uh, rap at this little. Uh, it's called the streets called Elgin Street in Third Ward. You know, it's like the ugliest street in Third Ward. Okay. It was like this little hole in the wall church that you probably couldn't even get 20 bodies of people in that church. Oh, wow. It was like, we're going to do this little revival. And the little <laughs> DJ boy that be rapping, we're going to have him come do a, a close us out. <laughs> so okay. I get in there, it's like two people in there. Oh, wow. They gave me the mic. <laughs> that was my first concert ever hey. rapping for Jesus. But I, I kept I kept doing it. It was a dude named Von Juan who had a studio. I went over to the Von Juan studio. He was like, yeah, y'all can get some beats and just make songs in the back. And he, I made a song. He let me record it. He was like, yo, you really got talent. I'll let you pretty much get free studio time. Oh, wow. Just That's what's up. Working. Yeah, shout out to Von Juan. He, Von Juan blessed me in my life a whole bunch, man. A lot of people, if y'all know Von Juan, out of Houston. He got a church now. And he doing his thing. But um, he started letting me rap for free and then, you know, next thing I know, man, like people start paying attention to these songs. I took I took my Pell Grant money again. <laughs> and how, I much, bought- how much Pell Grant money? Because I ain't had that money. Oh, I ain't, I ain't eat nothing that whole semester. Oh, like wow. I was just like, Bro, it's gonna be ramen noodles all year because this hey, Pell Grant. Why you was ramen playing noodles? Football? Why you playing? Why you playing yep. football? So, yeah, what? I mean, he, I said when he get on the he, private plane, he, he, then he eat good. Yeah, we had free food at the cafeteria, but at the apartment, I'm not spending no money on groceries. Oh, okay, or nothing. okay, oh, yeah. okay, 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 okay. Studio. Yeah, I'm like, so yo, they they got um, you. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. play football for us, but I don't know how you gonna eat. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, bro. So uh, I had asked some dude. I was like, man, how much does it cost to uh, for y'all to shoot a music video for us? We got the song. He's like, yeah, it's gonna be three thousand for the music video. I was like, three thousand. Like we ain't got no three thousand dollars. You crazy, man? So my <laughs> Pell Grant for another came semester. in, <laughs> and I said, "How much does a camera cost?" And then we went over to me and Corey Paul went over to Best Buy and we priced the cameras. We bought a Canon Seven D, and we started shooting all our own videos. Mm. You see we how shot that, you every see what investing yourself day. does for you. Wow. Why, why you looking at me? I'm just saying it's a statement. <laughs> I just kind of happened. To, you just in my in my lane. Nah, because right I invested nah, myself. He, he said that I'm directly like, to you. He, yeah, he looked at me. He said, "You see what it does?" He talking about my AC, probably. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm way off of the AC. <laughs> Got to invest in yourself. You might want to invest in it. <laughs> Putting that pilgrim on there has opened so many doors in my life, man. So. That's like the PVP loan. <laughs> <laughs> moving, moving right along. Uh, we don't want to get into that one right there, bro. Moving right along. So, so listen, man. I know 2020. Um, how excited were you about that, man? 2020 Summer Fest when it was supposed to happen originally. Right. Um, you know when it first came about, man. I remember hitting up Nipsey Nice. I was like, bro, this could be something special. Yeah. You know, it's a, a, a opportunity because you know we kind of lost the Legacy Conference. Mm. It was like it's an opportunity to to bring some energy to, to to like get the genre like all look at each other in the eyeballs. You feel Facts, me? Yeah. And 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 then I I just I just knew it was gonna be dope when we got out, and I think it's gonna be dope next year. It yeah, will. It's gonna be crazy. You know, but when you get all those people out there, the energy it's gonna really make people believe in the movement again. Yeah. You know, uh, just so much work to be done. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I really believe in what and, and what all these different artists are doing. You know what I'm saying? And I. Uh, so I was excited. I was I was mad excited. You know, I was really bummed out last year, and then just finding out. I think yesterday I found out. Yeah, yeah. I, I, 
Man, I was. <laughs> I saw the I saw the uh, the message pop up on my phone, and I looked at it. I said, "Please don't tell." But me. I mean, ain't, ain't nothing he can do. Ain't nothing yeah, they nothing, can do. That's now. the thing. There's nothing you can do about that. Nothing you can do, man. The whole world, right? Now. I, I'm yeah. looking at all these different artists like J Cole. Everybody got these tours set up. It's about to they be not shot. Finna, these tours are all finna fall off. Little baby oh, ahead yeah. of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what well, he already on tour? Uh, everybody canceling them right yeah, now. They can't. Yeah. They, they they can't do nothing about that, man. Yeah, the the, the cities are shutting down. So yeah, I mean, when they say the cities, I'm surprised right now. Honestly, Atlanta ain't did nothing. Man, I'm just surprised. But we're coming back. It's gonna yeah, come back. We now. already got uh, some sanctions down here. I'm married. I'm pulled out. Everybody's back on mask mandate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I'm just hoping they don't shut the state back down. That's gonna be crazy. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't know, man. They, they. It, it, it's I real. hope we not. Gotta trust God. We still coming to the studio. I don't care what none of y'all say. <laughs> we isolated. Anyway, so <laughs> we <laughs> way, <laughs> we way far away. Yeah, <laughs> it's hey, more than hey, six hey. feet. This is an eight hey. foot table. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, that's true. <laughs> So listen, man. What you got coming up next, man? We don't want to hold you up too much longer, man. But what you got coming up next? Uh, man, talk to I'm working us. on. I'm working on a whole bunch of different angles, man. Our team. I, shout out to my team. I got a beautiful team. Guys that get up every day and put a lot of hard work in. Yeah. Um, you know, from Chris to Bosch to Nazilon to Deeds to Lido to it's just. I mean, I, I can't thank God enough for these dudes, Matt. Um, you know, so. We're working hard to, to really bring out a couple projects. And um, one of the ones that I'm telling y'all now, but y'all know when it drops, it should be a, it should be a special project. This year. It's called Light of the Trenches, mm. which is really just, you know, uh, me talking about, you know, being a difference in the community, being a light and, and uh, you know, a, a lot of what who I am and what I do, you know. Yeah, make sure we get that project. I also right. seen you uh, on Instagram. You and D1 got something coming up. Ooh. Oh, in D1, Come we on. might work on a little pack. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We got a couple songs in the cut, so. I can't wait to hear that, man. That's going to be dope. I'm excited yeah. for that. Yeah. I'm excited for I'm that. Gonna, yeah. That's why I said, you know, even though it got canceled next year, I think it's going to be bigger than it was supposed to be this year. Man, this is just. Yeah, I hope so, man. They should be locked in. So, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If everybody hustle, everybody keep working hard. It'll be it'll be even bigger. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Before you go, man, I really want to get your opinion on this. Um, a lot of times, CHH gets the uh, the title of being very corny. Why do you think that? Oh, uh, because dudes be corny. <laughs> All right, guys, that's real. That's the realest the realest answer we got. I mean, I, I think it's corny because in CHH the bars are slow. Uh, like the bars, it's not actually. Like the bar's low on a bunch of levels. Mm. You, you don't really gotta be about this faith walk. Back you don't really be dope. Back you don't really have effort into your crap. Like, so what happens is you get a lot of mediocrity. Mm. And the mediocrity is what's corny. Mm. You feel mm. what I'm saying? So a- a- ain't nothing corny about like you know, like saying Jesus or saying Jesus is my savior or saying that Jesus is the way to truth. Like ain't nothing corny about that. It's not it's not that people don't think Jesus is corny. Jesus is controversial. Mm. Jesus is hard. Facts. It's not that Jesus is corny. It's 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 we we have a low bar when we have when we set up for too much mediocrity, you know, and we don't challenge and push or like, you know, there's a thing the Bible says, be in the world but not of the world. Facts. You know, I think a lot of times, like we just don't we ain't got no saltiness. We like we're we're you know too easily satisfied by like stuff that's like. It's like man, if, it's just streams, bro. It's a whole world out there. He, you know what I'm saying? Streams, like, that's what he said. You worry about bro, streams, please, though. Please, streams? Please. What are we talking about? Streams? Streams. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a whole city. Yeah. And it's like our, our goals and the trophy right now. Our trophies are what we think is dope. It's not lit. It's you know what I'm saying. It's a lot more to be done. And so I'm just hoping. I'm hoping some real ones win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes you just gotta change the culture from the top. You on the ballot to uh, for an award too, aren't you? Ah, uh, sh- sh- that's news to me. <laughs> I gotta go back and look because I know they got something. I, I could have sworn I saw you on there because I, kn- I knew this interview was coming up. I was like, hold up, everybody. I could- I'm gonna go back and look and find out. True, that's a blessing. Yeah, <laughs> he he nominated so for I, stuff he don't even know about. I want to ask a question, man. So let's say an artist. I'm just being real because. Let's say an artist like that you know that, for instance, you say corny. Would you just still do a record with him? 
I'm just curious because I miss a lot of people that. Really good question. That's it. Yeah. So what? So man, in my projects, I don't really have too many features on them. Which is good. Um, yeah. But you know what? But I, I I be reaching out to a lot of artists. Wow. I be sending all. They don't be using them. Stir it up. <laughs> um. So. I don't know, man. Like uh. I work with a dude that's got a lot of heart all day. I work with a dude that's got a lot of passion. Um, but like, I, I, I mean, like, uh, for me, the most important thing is that dudes is, is um, dudes care. Like, I don't, I ain't just making a song to make a song. I'm making a song to try to touch somebody. Okay, good. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if I can hear that in the record, if I can hear that in who they are, I'm down. If it's if it's on some other stuff, he said, "Dude, I, I ain't mean, no women. <laughs> I ain't hear nothing about no women. He said, he said all dudes. What? I ain't hear nothing about no women. <laughs> uh oh, somebody hopping on the track. Yeah. Now he said, like, "Uh, I care more about the person. Yeah. See, so I got some. I got some people. I if I tell some people to reach out to you, what you what would you think about? Is that okay? Tell them to hit you up, email." I think he went out. Go ahead. Uh, I was saying, um, what if we had? I got some people that uh, I think that's pretty dope and real solid. Um, would it be okay to tell them to reach out to you? How does that look? How, what's the process for them to do that? Cause, yeah, yeah, definitely. Cause, uh, yeah, yeah, they just hit my link. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, yeah we're going to do that because uh, that's, that's enough of that. That, that, that kind of stuff need to stop. I don't hit my know. link on my Instagram. Yeah, we're going to do that. Cause that, that kind of stuff needs to stop. It, it goes on. I've I've heard other people say it too. I know even when Bizzle came in, he he said the same thing. He was reaching out to people, and you know it was it he was just getting that brick wall. I mean, yeah, I'd be like, bro, I don't think they really be trying to work. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So listen, brother. Um, real quick, man. Let everybody know they can follow yeah. you on social media, man. What's the socials? Let them know where we could tap in with you. Let them know the websites. Let them know what you got. All that good oh, stuff, man. Yeah. yeah, go to uh uh at reconcile us. At reconcile and like me and you us. At reconcile us. You find me on there. Once you find me on any of those YouTube, Instagram, just type reconcile and it's real easy. And I'm gonna pop up. He's really trying to get at me. Just shoot our team a DM, get a DM. Somebody gonna see it. You feel me? Yeah. You know, um and, and Make a difference. Go live your life to, to make a difference in somebody else's life. You feel me? Definitely, man. Look, we definitely appreciate you. I want to say, whenever you come back let's to the up, A, yo. whenever you come back to the A, man, hit us up, man. Yes, let's, let's come sir. into the studio, man. Do it in, 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 uh, in person. So I mess with y'all. That's ready. Yes, sir. Most deaf, most deaf, most Love deaf. So listen, man, make sure I go ahead and tap in with the brother Reconcile, man, and, and so, follow him on all the socials, man. Fresh Leftovers Radio Show. Uh, and we are out. Yeah.